Good morning and welcome. Good morning. And welcome to everyone who will be viewing this video, thanks to our website and members of this parish who arrange it. God's peace be with you as well. As we gather today, we begin by remembering the Sartlip First Nation peoples, a part of the Wasonic Nation on whose traditional land we now gather in gratitude. We acknowledge their story and their stewardship of the land and water, the plants and animals through many generations. We remember also those who have called this exact place their home for almost 140 years the community of faith known as St. Michael and All Angels. We've had a wonderful first seven days together, officially, it's been nine, I guess. And yesterday's sale was fantastic, both as a time together, working together, and in terms of the results. And I'd like to call for a brief announcement. Yes, please use the microphone at the lectern. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As John said, the sign of a good event is people, food, and product, right? So yesterday, our amazing team out in the concession area uh, did a yeoman's job. So thank you, thank you to them. And, and know that that concession raised about $500 just on its own yesterday after they paid their bills. You know, if you're looking at our dollar, amounts. If you add that in to the total, so far we're at $5,800. And the, there is more to come because the hall is still fitted out for Coffee Fellowship and it's by donation if you wish to purchase. And know that we had a lot of competitors for our sale yesterday. Mm. And to me and to you, you should be very, or we should all be very pleased that we're supported in such a huge way, not just within, but without. We have people who come every year, and they do say thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for being I understand that the king and queen would have liked to have been here, but they had a previous commitment. Um, but we will remember them during the service this morning. Uh, last, oh yes, another announcement? I would like to say thank you very much to all the people who signed cards for my birthday. Thank you very much. Uh, you're welcome. In addition to the magnificent sale on Saturday, we had our many of our usual uh, gatherings of the week, and I enjoyed being with the crafting and stitching group on Tuesday, and the study group on Wednesday morning, and then meeting briefly with the choir on Thursday afternoon, and in the coming week, I will look forward to gathering with other groups, including the Parish Guild, which is having its meeting on Tuesday. We. Brian, do you have an announcement? I do, do you have a moment? Sure. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I've got three things. First off, if you could continue wearing your masks in church, we will discuss it at the next council meeting on May 16th, and we'll see where we go from there. But at the moment, please continue wearing your masks. Coffee Fellowship. After today, we have nobody signed up. So we need people to sign up for the Coffee Fellowship. The list is at the back. Please sign up. And today is officially John's first Sunday. So I've been promoted to Rector's Warden from Bishop's Warden starting today, officially. Well, congrats. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you to John. Welcome to our midst. And that's all I have. Thank you. And that reminds me that as long as the bishop says that the clergy are to wear a mask when administering Holy Communion, I will continue to wear a mask when administering Holy Communion. I don't wear it when I'm up here and some distance from you because it seems to be safe and it makes it, me a lot more intelligible 
without the mask on. So, so we will uh, discuss this at Parish Council. I did want to mention that the mobility group is on the calendar for this week. I plan to be there. And I ask your prayers for Valda, who has been quite ill. Um, I know she leads the mobility group and perhaps, well, I expect she won't be there, um, but I'll be there to meet with the group and uh, learn some things about it and uh, maybe even do a few yoga poses. We'll, we'll see what, what happens. Well, this morning, we've already practiced the, the opening dialogue of the Eucharist, often known by its Latin name of Sursum Corda, just means lift up your hearts in Latin. And we've got other singing as well, because first of all, we want to recognize all those who are having birthdays or anniversaries or just a significant event in their lives. And if you are, I invite you to stand or raise a hand and say something about it. Eighty-seven. Congratulations. Well, his tenth rector here, not the tenth rector of the parish. <laughs> Thank you, and happy birthday. Is there anyone else who wishes to raise a hand? Lonnie's birthday tomorrow. It's Lonnie's birthday tomorrow, says somebody from the organ. Is that correct? <laughs> He's up in the balcony. Ah, there you are. Is that correct that tomorrow's your birthday? Yes, good. Well, happy birthday to you. So we have the words of the blessing song in the service leaflet. And let us sing. special day of their own yesterday and so although this isn't our tradition for every Sunday this morning we'd like to sing in their honor Please remain standing for our opening hymn, Christ is Made the Sure Foundation, number 300.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Hallelujah. May his grace and peace be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all the hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Let me know thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may be perfectly lucky and worthy of the end of our own Through Christ our Lord. I believe our glory is found on a pew card. And you may even know the tune. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another and walk in the ways and commandments, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated and I invite any children who would like to come forward for a brief chat to do so. Would you like to sit over here? Oh, Yes, you can have real seats today. Please, you can sit right here. Oh, no, you want to sit there. Okay, sit wherever you'd like. And then I'll sit, I guess, behind you. I'm new here, and my name is John. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> can you tell me your name so I can start to learn them? My name's Alma. Anna? Alma. Alma. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yes? My name's Ada. Ada. Anna. Anna. Excellent. And what's your name? Yeah, and he doesn't have to tell me his name if he doesn't want to. But I'm glad you're all here. 
Do any of you know what is a cornerstone? Have you ever heard that word? It's kind of a big word. You know, you know what a stone is, right? Yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a thing that doesn't move. Yes. It can be big and very heavy and hard, a stone. No, it's a thing it that also has stuff in it. And it also has stuff in it. It can. <laughs> oh. It can bonk into stuff. Yes, stones can bonk into stuff, and you got to be careful with rocks. <laughs> so this morning, in the Bible, we hear about a cornerstone. And you know what a corner is, right? You know, when two things come together like that, it makes a corner yes. in a building. Yes, and that's where the Pope is, right? Yeah. yeah. So, older buildings often have a cornerstone, a stone that's put down when they first start to build the building. And do you know why the cornerstone is important? Any thoughts about why they put the cornerstone down first? <laughs> I well, think, yeah. I think because to help it not fall down yes. in bad weather. Yes. The cornerstone helps keep the building stand upright. And it also does one other thing. It makes sure the building is facing the right way. Because yeah. the builders take the cornerstone and then they build from it. Now, this morning we're told that Jesus is like a cornerstone for us. And that's because our lives are built on him, the way a building is built on a cornerstone, and he points us in the right direction, the way a cornerstone does. And he does all this because he loves us. So as you go to your own group now, please remember that Jesus is always with you, that Jesus always loves you, and that Jesus is your cornerstone. Thanks for coming up. The first reading is from Acts. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses had laid their coat on the feet of the young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When they had said this, he died. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, Thanks be to God. The words and the music of the refrain of our psalm are found in our service bulletins. In you, O God, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. 
For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, who are the God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness, save me. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand and join in singing hymn 283, By All Your Saints Still Striving. We'll sing the first and third verses.
Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, but if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of our Lord. Together, let us pray, or let up me lead you in prayer. <laughs> o gracious and merciful God, grant us to hear your gracious word and to embrace it and to let it flourish within us and in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, again, good morning to all of you. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome fellow members of the Society of Martyrs and the Royal and Holy Priesthood of Spiritual Sacrifices. Today we have the example of St. Stephen the Proto-Martyr. Proto-Martyr just means the first martyr. I wonder, David, whether you don't have to write some words for that hymn we just sang, because there doesn't seem to be a verse for St. Stephen in there. <laughs> yes. What do we see when we see Stephen? We see one who is like Jesus in so many ways, most obviously like Jesus in that he was falsely accused of blasphemy, and also like Jesus in that he was put to death in a horrible and violent way. So, fellow members of the Society of Martyrs, who wants to be like St. Stephen? Now, part of the difficulty is that when we hear the word martyr, we hear it through modern ears. Have any of you ever heard someone say, well, you don't have to be a martyr? I've heard that. And my response to that is, well, actually you do. <laughs> you do have to be a martyr. Because the word martyr in its essence means witness. Someone who witnesses to something or someone important, more important than themselves. And we all have to do that witness. It's not a question of whether we witness or not. 
It's a question of to whom or to what we witness. We all have to be a martyr, a witness. This morning we heard about Stephen's witness, how he bore witness to Jesus as the Christ of God, as the Son of God, as the crucified and risen and ascended Lord of all. This was the earliest creed of the church. Before the Nicene Creed was composed, before the folks in Rome put together the Apostles' Creed for holy baptisms, the earliest creed of the church was, Jesus is the Lord of all creation. And of course, others who wished to be the Lord, for example, the Roman emperor, didn't really like that. But that was their creed and their message to the world. It was St. Stephen's proclamation, and it was the reason why he was killed. I think we probably would prefer, over the reading from the Acts of the Apostles, to pay attention to the Gospel reading, the reading that begins with the first verse of the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to John. I can't say how many times I've read it. I've read it, I don't know, I'm not going to try to guess, but let's say at most funerals and interments. They are words that give us so much comfort when we're facing death, whether it's our own or the death of loved ones. They're the words of Jesus' promise to his first disciples, which he maintains as his promise to us. Don't be troubled. He says, trust me, I have gone to prepare a place for you, and when you die, I will take you to myself, and I will lead you to that place, and there you will dwell with me and in God's love forever. Even now, for example, a week ago when I led the interment out there, I read those words, and they still speak to me so powerfully as they may speak to you. They are so comforting in the face of death. But could they not also be so strengthening in the face of life as well? It's hard sometimes not to be troubled. It's hard sometimes to trust in God, to trust in Jesus in this world, which is troubled and troubling. And Jesus knows this because he didn't live in any other world. He lived in this world in which we live. And yet Jesus calls us today, as he called his first disciples, to trust him, to trust him in this world as it is, and to ask for anything. Well, anything that is consistent with trusting in him. And moreover, to continue in the work that he began, the work of reconciling all people to God, and thereby the work of reconciling all people to each other, and thus the work of restoring all creation to God and God's ways. Martyr's a difficult word, and on Wednesday morning, thanks to the study group, I was reminded how the word sacrifice can be a difficult one too. Peter invites us to join him in being a royal priesthood, a holy priesthood that offers sacrifices to God made acceptable through Jesus. I think unlike martyr, where we have a, a natural aversion because we associate it perhaps too much with death and not so much with witnessing, sacrifice is a word that troubles us because it's misused often in our world, misused by people who want us to bear the cost 
of something for their benefit. But Peter still reminds us that Jesus has made us a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices. Now Peter and the early church would have remembered certain things about sacrifice that we don't remember. They would have remembered that before the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed, they would go there to make sacrifice, material sacrifice. They would bring various offerings, wine, oil, grain, animals, and they would hand those sacrifices over to the priests who would sacrifice them, or more strictly speaking, and ask God to sacrifice them. Because sacrifice, in its Latin root, means to make holy. They would make their offering, the priests would present them to God, and God would make them holy. The oil, the grain, the animals, whatever it was. And then they would be returned to them, with a portion taken for the benefit of the priests, returned to them to make a holy meal with God to nourish them. Peter and those who first knew him and heard him would have known that about sacrifice, that it's about offering something that God may make it holy and give us back to us. They would have also remembered that Jesus himself made the perfect sacrifice, the sacrifice of himself the sacrifice that only he could make because as a human he could give his life and as God he could do it in perfect love for God the Father and for all God's creation. This morning when we hear Peter say that we are a royal priesthood, a holy priesthood to make spiritual sacrifices to God acceptable through Jesus, we're reminded that we are called to offer ourselves to God and that Jesus does make our offering of our lives and labor holy and gives them back to us that we may have abundant life. One way we do this is at this altar. When we bring forward our offering in the offering basin, it's not just a financial contribution to God's work, though it is that. It is really our self-offering, our self-offering of our lives and labor to God, to be put upon the altar, that our offering, in combination with Jesus' perfect offering, may be made holy, that our lives may be made holy. Now, it's not just here. We, we act as a holy priesthood whenever and wherever we trust God. We offer ourselves, our time, our energy, our thoughts, our hands to God's service. And by that action and by those words, we give hope to our neighbors. And we give hope to them not just by material aid that we give them, but by proclaiming the mighty acts of God, who in Jesus has called us out of darkness into God's light. Saint Stephen, he did this not so much by his dying, though the word martyr may draw our attention there, he did this above all by first proclaiming through his words and acts of caring that God has come in Christ Jesus and called us out of darkness into light. He did this work of holy priesthood by entrusting himself to Jesus even at his death. And perhaps most tellingly, he did this work by asking Jesus 
to forgive those who were killing him. In that last act, perhaps, we see most clearly God's light shining in his life, transforming him, and making him a holy priest. Well, we remember today that Stephen offered his life to God, to God's service, to the care of others in God's name, and God took that life and made it holy and gave it back to Stephen. And in keeping with Jesus' promise, protected that life, even at death and beyond death. This morning, God calls us a holy priesthood to offer ourselves to him, to his work, to his love. As Jesus reminded his first disciples, he reminds us again this morning that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is our way to God the Father. He is the truth about God and humankind. And he is the life that he gives to us that death cannot conquer. Rejoice, O oh fellow members of the Society of Martyrs and the royal and holy priesthood. Rejoice, for Jesus has done this and is doing this and will continue to do this. For he is faithful, who is our way, our truth, and our life. I invite you to stand as you are able. And let us confess the faith of our baptism. As we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered in the conscious heart, was crucified, and died in his spirit. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please feel free to stand or kneel, whatever is most comfortable, for the prayers. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Let us come to our heavenly Father <clears throat> with all our troubles and concerns and pray for the church and the world. To the petition, Lord in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Lord, be with your whole church on earth and the church in this country. Keep it faithful and let your message of forgiveness through Christ be heard and believed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your house, there are many rooms, space for all your children. We ask that you help us to make space for one another in our lives, in our churches, and in our communities. We commend to you our primate, Linda, our national indigenous archbishop, Chris, our Metropolitan, Lynn, our Bishop, Anna, and our new priest, John. 
we commend to you our brothers and sisters at St. Margaret of Scotland on Caliano Island and their priest, Sarah. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in Wales. Uphold them in their office with true faith and a godly life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless our country and help those in authority to strive for harmony, honesty, and justice. Remember our King, Charles, our Prime Minister, Justin, our Premier, David, those in our local government, and all who maintain law and order. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide our industry, our education, our arts, culture and leisure activities, our mass media, our science and technology. Be with the unemployed and the overworked, the sick and the aged, the poor, the needy and the lonely. We commend to you and your generous compassion all who are in need this day, including those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protect our nation from hatred and violence, from arrogance, discord, and confusion, and from all evil. Bring unity among the different peoples of our land, the indigenous and the non-indigenous people, those born here and those from overseas, the rich and the poor, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us to care for the land and protect its fragile environment so that the blessings you give can be passed on to future generations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Father, that you hear us and care for us in all our needs. Open our eyes that we may see you in your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident of God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share a sign of God's peace in Christ. Peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's
during the preparation of God's holy table. We will sing hymn 620, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds. Gracious God, you show us the way, give us your divine life. May everything you do to direct our thoughts and all of us be We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen.
we sing our joyful hymn of praise to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ, Christ will come again. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming in in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us. And upon these gifts, that all eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil.
on the cross. Now we are raised to new life. We were buried in your tomb. Now we share in your resurrection. Live in us that we may live in you. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Thank you.
stand as you're able. Let us pray. God of love, in this Eucharist is the occurring of truth and share in your life. May we always walk in your way. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us. Peace to love and serve the Lord.